and I think we're live. Let's so hi, Amber, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. And you've just been telling me how much snow you've got. <laughs> yeah, the- we got a lot. And we got, oh, I think somewhere between seven, eight inches last night. So, so pretty it- wide outside. <laughs> was it snowy for Christmas as well? Yeah, yeah, it was. I'd love a white Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So can you start by just telling us a bit about yourself and your horses? Yeah, so um, I'm 25. I live in Nebraska. For anyone who's not familiar with the States, Nebraska is right in the center. Um, I grew up on a small farm. We had a wide variety of animals growing up. Um, I had horses for most of my life, but for the most part, they were just kind of backyard pets. You know, we didn't know a lot about horses, um, just knew that I liked them. Didn't do a lot with them, just rode them a couple times a year. And that was, that was about it. It wasn't until probably the last um, three or four years that I probably started my horsemanship journey. And then my horse is Thor. He's a nine-year-old Palomino paint. Um, I raised him since the day he was born. Um, he's quite a character, um, big personality, always getting into all sorts of mischief, um, (laughs) keeps me on my toes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So you say you've only been doing sort of horsemanship for the last three to four years. Yeah. That's when I really started it. Like I said, I, I had horses, you know, before that pretty much growing up, but I really knew nothing about them. I just kind of jump on and try to hope they would go in the direction I pointed them and (laughs) that was about all we did. (laughs) Okay so what changed so when you got into the horsemanship thing what made you sort of go down that route? Um, So it was kind of a process I mean it was always something I was interested in but there wasn't a lot available to me in the area I guess Um, at least at the time I didn't know about anything to really teach me. Um, So then it was just I happened to go to an expo that we used to have here in Nebraska. I went with some friends um, just to kind of look around and stuff. And we happened to sit down to have lunch and it was one of Dan James's demonstrations. And I didn't know who he was at the time, um, but I sat there and I watched him do all these amazing things with horses that I had never seen anybody do before. I didn't know those things were possible really. Um, So it really piqued my interest in that. Um, So then I started kind of researching his training methods and I would go and watch him do different demonstrations at different expos. And, you know, I just I just kind of got got hooked on it on on, from there. And so that's really where it kind of started for me in the beginning was just kind of seeing that. And something just clicked with me for the first time I seen the Liberty. So um, Facebook Live is turning into the Dan James Appreciation Society. It really is, isn't it? I noticed that with the last few videos. Yeah. Oh, dear. I don't know. So, right. So, obviously, Katie suggested you as a guest. And she, yeah. I'm going to read what she said. She said, you've got a cool perspective on liberty and not giving up. So, I wondered if you might be able to elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I sure will. Um, it's a little bit of a, a story, so bear with me. That's fine, um, that's fine. So, I mean, I told you about how I initially saw Dan at the at the expo and kind of started following him a little bit. And then I had heard that he was doing a Liberty Clinic in Kentucky. Um, so I called him and started asking him about it. Well, the problem was, is it was supposed to be a clinic for people who have already done clinics with him before, which I never have. Um, but I just kind of kept bugging him about it. And he finally (laughs) agreed to let me come. I think just because he was tired of hearing from me, you know, I think he probably thought I was a little crazy. Um, So then I was super excited that I got to go. And then I heard that the clinic was actually gonna be with Heath Harris from Australia, which is who Dan learned from. Um, He's trained a bunch of movie horses and done a a lot of really cool stuff with horses. Mm -hmm. So then I was even, more over the moon than what I was before, you know? So I convinced my mom, who is not a horse person at all, to drive 14 hours with me to Kentucky for this clinic. 
And the whole time I was thinking, you know, this is going to be the best week of my life. This is just going to be awesome. And let me tell you, it was rough. It was one of the roughest weeks ever. Um, it didn't take me long to realize I was in way over my head. Um, I realized how much I didn't know, how much Thor didn't know. Um, he was a young horse. He'd never been off the farm before, let alone on a that big of a trip. Um, he kind of fell to pieces. He was a hot mess. It was just, it was just kind of a mess. And uh, we spent the whole week at the clinic doing this, practicing the same thing over and over. And everyone else in the clinic progressed really quickly um, and kept making progress. And we just didn't seem to be progressing at all. We just kept doing the same thing. And in fact, at the end of the clinic, we actually got sent home to keep doing the thing that we practiced the whole clinic. Like we did not make progress in the clinic. And I was I was so deflated after that week, you know, I was just disappointed, like just didn't, I mean, I enjoyed going and being there, but then I was just disappointing in ourselves. You know, we just didn't make the progress that I thought we were going to make. Um, but then while we were in Kentucky, you know, my dad would call us and see, you know, how things were going. Um, and then during that time, he would tell us about these headaches he was getting and that he just wasn't feeling very well. Well, then it was just a few days after my mom and I got home from Kentucky that my dad ended up going to the hospital for stroke-like symptoms. Um, and it was there that we found out that he actually had a brain tumor. So then the next day he went in for brain surgery to remove as much of the tumor as they possibly could. Um, so he was in the ICU for a few days and then he was sent to a rehab facility um, after he was sent home from that, he started radiation. Um, so through all this, he lost a lot of his mobility and he was actually wheelchair bound, um, which was really hard for him because my dad was always a very active, very healthy guy. Um, he was a farmer. He really loved working outside. Um, he loved his animals and he just couldn't do those things anymore. So I started where I would bring the horses up to the front yard for him to see and be able to visit with them in that way. And then around the same time, I heard about a, um, a competition that, a star search competition that the Midwest Horse Fair was hosting where anyone could enter an act. Um, and if they chose you, then you would get to perform it at the show, um, at the expo. And I thought, you know, up until this point, I hadn't worked with Thor or done any of his liberty um, since the clinic. You know, there was just too much going on. Um, so I decided to start working with him again. And I decided to start working with him in the front yard so my dad could watch. So I would bring him up and we'd put on these little performance shows for my family or friends. You know, anybody who'd happen to stop by, we'd just do these little shows in the yard as part of the practice. Well, all this with my dad when he was first diagnosed and first had the surgery was the beginning of May. Well, then it was August that he passed away. Mm -hmm. So it was a very short time span. Um, and obviously, I wasn't in a good place at that point. You know, I didn't want anything to do with my horses. I didn't want to work with Thor. You know, the horse fair was the farthest thing from my mind. You know, it was just, I just didn't do anything. And then I just started getting this nagging feeling that I just, I couldn't get rid of it. You know, as much as I tried to push it away, it just kept coming back and bugging me that I needed to enter this competition. So then it was actually the day before the deadline for the submissions and I didn't have anything prepared. I just, I went outside and I just videoed what we had, which honestly wasn't a lot, you know. There wasn't a whole lot to show. Um, and then, but I sent it and I said, you know what? I did it. It's done. You know, just forget about it. Like I wasn't expecting to hear back from them or anything. And then a couple months later, I got a phone call and they said, you know, we'd like you to take a spot in the competition. And I remember getting off the phone and my hands were just shaking. You know, I was just, it was so unexpected. I was not expecting that at all. And then my very next thought was, 
we're not ready. <laughs> like we're so, we're so not ready for this. Um, so I started just trying to come up with a routine and what I envisioned and what I wanted to do. And then I remembered meeting this couple from Texas. Um, I'd only briefly just met them once, but I remembered that they took in interns. Um, so I contacted them and I ended up going down there to intern with them for a little bit leading up to the show. And they helped me kind of prepare me and guide me, you know, down the path of getting ready for this show. And I was so nervous leading up to the show that I was so close to just not even going. I'm like, I, I don't think I want to go. I don't think we're ready for this, you know. Um, and then I get to the show and people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you made it here, you know. And, you know, if your horse runs off, that's okay. It happens. <laughs> and I knew they were trying to be like, nice and helpful but i'm like guys you're really not helping <laughs> <laughs> but um once we stepped into the arena you know my nerves kind of went away and i dedicated the performance to my dad we performed in front of a a crowd of eight thousand people wow. and um we ended up placing second in our division um and then i was just i was hooked after that i knew it was something that i I wanted to continue. So it was all, it all happened pretty fast. And I just kind of jumped in feet first and I didn't really know what to expect, but it turned out pretty well for me. Wow. That's an amazing story. So what was the time scale from, from sort of entering the competition to, to get in there? So um, when I first attended Dan's clinic in Kentucky, it was, I believe the end of April. Um, my dad was diagnosed the very beginning of May and he passed away in August. Um, I went down to Texas to start the internship the end of January and the competition was in April. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. So from the very start of going to Dan's mm -hmm. clinic and not having any Liberty training to the show that we performed was right about a little under a year. It was right about a year. Gosh, and do you so, think you would have kind of got to that level if you hadn't have entered the, the thingy? Or do you think it was like- I don't think so, because that was really a push that I needed to really mm -hmm. try to figure out what I was doing, you know? Like it really made us push ourselves to find out how far we could go. Mm -hmm. um, if I wasn't getting ready for that show, um, I don't think we would have got there. I don't think we would have got there that fast, you know? I, it really tested to see how far we could push ourselves. And what a lovely tribute to your dad as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. Um, right, so I don't know quite how to follow on from that. that was <laughs> <I know>. Sorry. <laughs> You're okay. So, yeah, what what's one common myth about liberty training that you want to debunk? So I would debunk the myth that liberty training is easy or that it's just us with our horses following us around in the pasture um, because liberty in itself is a, is a discipline in its own right um, it's very detailed it's very precise um, there's a lot that goes into it i mean i have this horse that i have no attachment to or no connection to he could run off at any point that he wants to really um, but yet I can control his speed. You know, I can get him to go faster or slower. I can control his size of his circle. I can control the direction of his circle. I can control whether he's circling or whether he's moving laterally or all those things. You know, there's just a lot more precision and detail to it these days um, than what I think a lot of people give it credit for. Mm -hmm. And that's just made me think out of interest. What was the exercise that you worked on for the whole week at the clinic? <laughs> well, it was actually the mark training. I don't know if you've done that where they've got the little square mark that they, yeah. you know, you, you start them out on the wall where you try to get them to get the concept of standing on the mark as their safe point, you know? Um, yeah. And most of the people progress off the wall very quickly. It's usually something that only takes a couple of days and, yeah, we never got off the wall during that week. <laughs> and, and we went home and we still had to work on it. It was just, it was not something that that clicked with him very well. 
that was the first point that I started with with my pony with Dan's DVDs before I started sort of the Skype lessons. And uh, the pony like literally wants to stand on anything he sees now. He's like, really? do you want to tell me this? Do you want to this one? This one? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, we we weren't quite mastering that one. <laughs> well, he's totally overgeneralized it or whatever you call it. It's quite funny. <laughs> So what's the most important thing that you've learned through your journey with horses and or liberty training? Yeah, so I think one of the things that I learned, and I'm still learning it, um, is just not to compare yourself too harshly to other people. Um, that's something that I still struggle with, you know, because it's hard. It's hard not to compare yourself. Um, I mean, everyone goes at their own pace. I mean, compare yourself to your past self. You know, if you're making progress from where you were before, then you're on the right path. Um, also, everyone's liberty looks a little bit different. I mean, um, the way I teach a horse or the way I communicate with a horse is going to be different than the next person, even if um, I, even if we learn from the same person. It's still going to look a little bit different on certain things. Um, to me, liberty is a bit of an art form. Um, I'm always trying to figure new things out, maybe some things that nobody's done before, um, trying to put my own flair on it a little bit, trying to push ourselves to be better. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, try to stop and think back to how far you've come. I have a bad habit of looking at people that are more advanced than me, or I think about all the things I still want to learn and all the things I still want to accomplish. And it's easy to feel overwhelmed by it and think, you know, I'm never going to accomplish this. Um, but then I have to stop and make myself think, you know, back to my younger self, this is what I dreamed of when I was younger, you know, um, this is what I wanted. This is what I always wanted to do. Um, I never would have imagined if you asked me a few years ago, um, I never would have ima imagined the experiences and the knowledge that I would have here today. So it gives me a lot of hope of where I'll be in down the road in a few years or, you know, and it's, um, yeah. So I look forward to that, to see how far I come in another four years and look back on this moment now and, well, I'll tell you what, if you're 25, I'm 41, and the time from 25 to 41 has gone like that. I don't yeah. know how it happens. <laughs> yeah. Make the most of it and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I do my best. <laughs> I think um, comparing yourself to others, I think that is such a huge life lesson to learn not to do that. And yeah, and it's really hard because, I mean, you can know in your head, you know, don't compare yourself, but yeah. yet it's kind of a natural habit, I think, that we tend to do. Do you have any tips to, you know, stop doing that? Um, you know, that's a tough one. I think for me anyway, kind of like I said, I just have to focus on how far I've come already. Um, and it helps too when I talk to some people that are just getting started out and they're like, I see their perspective on me, I guess. And they're like, wow, I can't believe all the things you've accomplished and you've done so well. And it really kind of brings me back down to earth and like, you know, I really have accomplished a lot. And, you know, I may not have accomplished as much as this other person yet, but I've accomplished a lot more than I ever thought I was going to. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's just trying to keep things in perspective. Um, and yeah. discipline, isn't it? To remind yeah, you. Yeah, it really is. To stay in your lane, focus I on know, <laughs> it's hard. Um. So what's the best compliment that you've ever received? So I would have to say it was e it was either at the first show after the Wisconsin show at the Midwest Horse Fair that we finished. Um, I had just, we had just come out of the arena after our performance and Dan actually like chased me down and he's like, Amber, that was amazing. Uh -huh. And it's like, it was such a simple sentence, but it meant so much to me just because of where we started and how things went, you know, it just, it really meant a lot. The other one that comes to mind is after the, at the very first International Liberty Horse Association show um, that I attended in Kentucky, um, Heath Harris was one of the judges 
And he came up to me after our freestyle and he told me that he didn't even recognize my horse from the clinic that we did and that I had done a really good job with him. So again, that, that meant a lot just with how everything started and how far we'd come. So those, those are the two that come to mind. Oh, that's lovely. Um, right, so we've kind of touched on, oh, I've missed a question, but never mind, we'll go on to this one. Um, we've kind of touched on sort of how you started off doing performances, but have you performed in any other shows and sort of how did that come about? Yeah, so like we talked about, I kind of said how I got into my first show. And then after that, you know, I was really hooked on it and I wanted to do more shows. But then I learned pretty quickly that people didn't want to hire a performer that had only done one show and really had no experience to speak of. Um, so I ended up going and interning and working with some different horse trainers, just trying to expand my knowledge on things and still progress. Um, I did a couple of very small demonstrations, you know, and then just by chance, I happened across a ad where a equine entertainment company was looking for an intern. Um, so I sent in an application and I waited to see if I'd hear anything back. And they set up a phone interview with me and then they they offered me the position of the intern. So I was really excited. You know, I show up for the for the beginning of the show. Um, that first day they had a cast meeting where everyone in the show meets and they tell you where you're going and, you know, what you have to do for rehearsals. And then the cast dis disperses and I went up to the owner and I said, okay, I'm your intern, you know, what do you want me to do? And in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to be working backstage. I'm going to be cleaning things. I'm going to be mucking out stalls. And she goes, well, actually one of the, one of the cast members isn't going to be here for the last week of the show. So you're going to fill in in her spot. And she's like, so I need you to go to dance rehearsals. And so here I am in my blue jeans and my Western shirt, you know, never danced a day in my life um, in this dance rehearsal, trying to like not freak out and not panic. And I'm trying to learn these dances. Cause I mean, you got, you're with all these amazing cast members. Um, but I did it. So I ended up the last week of the show, I danced and I performed in the drills in that way in the show for that last week. Um, and then later on, they, they offered me, asked me to come back for the Christmas show and they asked me to bring Thor to do a Liberty routine. Um, so that's kind of how that got started too. It was another thing where I just kind of unexpectedly got dropped into it and just had to kind of learn to swim, I guess. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. That is, I, I can't think of anything worse than suddenly having to dance. <laughs> I know. And I'm not a good dancer. Like I, I just, I'm not very graceful. You know, I do much better with training horses and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoy it, but I'm like that poor dance teacher. I mean. <laughs> Amazing. Good for you. <laughs> um, so what frustrates you when you're training and how do you deal with that? So I tend to frustrate myself because mm. I always have, <laughs> I always have in mind, you know, what my end goal is, what I'm aiming for, what I want it to look like. And if it's not coming together quickly enough for me, or if I'm trying to teach something new and it's just, I'm just kind of stuck, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, I do get frustrated with that. And the best way that I've found to deal with that is to just walk away and take a breather because Nothing ever good comes out of working with your horse when you're frustrated, um, especially if you're working with a horse like Thor. Um, he gets flustered easily. So if I'm frustrated and he's frustrated, we just don't get a lot accomplished. Um, so I tend to just walk away, come back when I feel like my head is clear again. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's the next day, sometimes it's a couple days later, you know, depending on what it is. Um, I'll sit down and just try to think about it and try to figure out, you know, if it's not working, what could I possibly try that might work better? Or what is he, what am I saying that he's not understanding, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that's where my biggest frustration comes from. And I think it really does just help to just take a break um, 
and take a breather instead of frustrating both of you and maybe possibly making something worse. You said you said worked for a number of trainers as well. Does that get confusing if people have got sort of different cues and things? If you've trained a horse to do something to a certain cue and then somebody says, oh, you know, do it a different way, does that confuse you? Yeah, it definitely gets a little tricky. Um, and you definitely, like the more tricks and stuff you have on a horse, like my horse is getting to the point where we've got quite a few tricks. And part of the struggle is I'm like, I've got another trick I want to teach him, but where am I going to put this cue on him so he knows he doesn't get it confused with something else, you know? So the more you keep advancing, the more it does get a little tricky on trying to figure out how to keep things clear and separated for him, you know, because some of them are so detailed, like for a Spanish walk, it's just, you know, a little dressage whip above his knee. And for the bow, it's a dressage whip below his knee. So there's not a lot of margin of error there. So um, it does, it does get a little, a little tricky to try to figure that stuff out, especially if you're trying to teach something that like I personally have never taught before. So I don't know and he doesn't know and you're both trying to learn together um it can get a little frustrating sometimes yeah yeah and I think I because I'm such a geek try to read so much and watch so many DVDs and YouTube videos and stuff that I end, end up where my head nearly pops I know <laughs> it does it really does get that way sometimes and everybody yeah. does everything so slightly differently and you get a bit from one person and a bit from another and one thing might work better for you than something else but I'm like oh if I'm if I'm not careful I'm going to end up confusing us both <laughs> right yeah it's definitely a challenge uh, um right so do you have any practical tips or advice for people just starting out yeah so I would say just keep going don't give up you're definitely going to hit some points where you feel like it's really slow going and maybe you're not making the progress that you feel you should be making. Um, but then one day it just kind of all falls together and it's going to make you so happy that you stuck with it. I mean, um, Thor, I had so many people tell me he was not going to make it as a Liberty horse. They told me to just cut my losses, you know, try getting a different horse. He's just, he's not going to make it. And so then I obviously didn't really agree with that. You know, I saw a lot of potential in him and I decided to stick with him. And I'm really glad that I did because um, we've accomplished a lot of cool things together and it makes it all that more sweet, I guess, when you've worked that hard for it or had that much challenge. Um, so, I mean, just just stick with it. And if it's something you really want, just keep working at it. Um, yeah. And the other thing is don't be afraid to get creative and work with what you have. I don't have any sort of an arena or a facility to work at. Um, I would love one, obviously, but it's just not feasible for me to have at the moment. So I have to get kind of creative with where I practice and where I work on things, whether it's, you know, in the pasture or in the dry lot or in the front yard. Um, so you just you just kind of have to if it's something you really want, just find a way to make it happen. You know, just keep chipping away at it, and one day it'll it'll all kind of come together. So obviously, after the clinic, um, you went through all the the trauma with you with your dad. Yeah. How did you sort of? How did you get going again? From obviously, you'd not worked on what you wanted to work in the clinic. You'd just done the mark training. So yeah when it was time to pick it back up again how did you think where did you start how did you start you know it was it was really tough um horses is something that I shared with my dad you know he he really loved his horses in that way and for a while I didn't want anything to do with my horses and I just and then it kind of hit me you know my dad would want me to keep doing this um, it was something he wanted for me. He knew how much horses meant to me, and he would always try to go out of his way to help me however he could. He didn't know a lot about horses, but he always tried to make it so I could know more or I could do what I wanted to accomplish. Um, so I thought the best way to kind of honor him was to keep going. And I won't lie, there was a lot of days that I just, I didn't want to go do it. I, I didn't want to continue. You know, I thought, why am I doing this? Um, but I just had to kind of force myself 
to push through it. And I had to tell myself, you know, you've got this horse depending on you that you've got to, you got to do something with him. Um, and then it did really help me having that competition to work towards. I just kind of threw myself into it um, and really just kind of pushed ourselves because I had that end goal, I guess. Um, so yeah, it was, it wasn't easy, but I just kind of had to jump into it. Um, I had to decide whether it was something I really wanted to do or not. And when I decided it was something that I wanted, I just had to kind of jump feet first and just kind of push through it and try to try to figure it out. Um, there's a lot of days where I just, I don't know, you know, how to continue or how to do things. And that's where I said, sometimes it's nice just to walk away and think about it, you know, sit down, write down your goals. Um, think about, you know, what do you really want and what length are you willing to go to get it and just kind of go from there, see where you fall. <laughs> Did you have a trainer locally at that time or were you just trying to figure it out for yourself? No, so I didn't, I didn't have anybody um, like here at home locally. It wasn't till I went down to Texas to intern with that couple that um, that was the first time I've ever actually trained with anybody up until that point. It was just trying to figure things out on my own, um, and just picking up pieces where I could from expos and demos in that way. Um, but I didn't really know any, any horse trainers around here, especially ones that had that kind of focus or goal that I was interested in. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't until after the the Midwest Horse Fair that I really started to kind of meet people that were into Liberty and it kind of grew, I guess. Wow. So um, what are your big goals for 2021, COVID permitting? <laughs> I know, that's the hard part, right? And I had to think about this because like with the year as it's been, it, I don't know what this next year looks like. You know, it's hard to plan. It's hard to know what it looks like. Um, I hope to do more shows because that's really where my where my passion is on it. You know, I really enjoy performing and that's what I really enjoy to do. Um, I'm working on some like new tricks and new maneuvers with Thor that I think are a lot of fun. Um, I think it's going to add a lot to our freestyles. A big goal that I have in general um, and not necessarily for 2021, but just in general, is I really want to get a team of like two horses going together. Um, I'm not in a position right now to have a second horse, but that's always been one of my goals and one that I'm still aiming for in the future. Um, another one of my goals that I always aim for is I really would like to um, travel overseas, um, see how different people train, meet some different trainers around, you know. Um, again, probably not something that's going to happen in 2021, but something that I keep on my radar to make sure I'm available if it comes up. Um, and then I'm, I'm big on learning. I love to learn. I love to learn just about anything I can. So I'm always trying to, you know, watch people that are doing things that I think are impressive or more advanced than me and try to pick up from that. Um, so I'm really hoping 2021 is going to be a year of learning, of meeting new people, you know, really just pushing ourselves to keep down the journey of uh, just advancing and seeing what else we can accomplish. Amazing. So it's a kind of time of year where people start thinking about their goals, isn't it? So how do you yeah. do it? And do you do it? Do you write them all down? How do you do it? Um, I do like to write them down. Um, I think it solidifies it a little bit. Um, I'll even like put them in this, this little box, you know, like um, a bucket list, if you will, you know, like, this is what I'm hoping to accomplish. And um, I'm not always good at it. But it is helpful if you also try to write down how you're going to accomplish it. I'm not very good at that part. I've got a lot of dreams and a lot of goals. I'm not always good at putting down how I'm going to accomplish it. But yeah, I think it does help to um, kind of solidify it. You know, if you're if you're writing it down, it kind of makes it more real, something tangible that you can work for um, versus just keeping it in your head. It kind of stays there sometimes. I think if you if you put it out there, 
it makes you a little bit more accountable for trying to make it happen. Yeah. I think it's amazing when you write them down at the start of the year, then forget all about it. And then you find them at the end of the year and you're like, oh, wow, I did that. I did that. I did that. <laughs> right. Exactly. I know it, it is a good feeling then. Or like you said, if you can, if you write them down and store them away and then you can come back and look and see how much you actually accomplished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish you all the best in 2021. Um, yes. Lovely to chat with you and to meet you. Yes. And um, Thank you for having me. Your dad sounds like my dad. My my dad's my my wingman and um, yeah. it's special. And that was um, yeah. a lovely story yeah. for sharing that with us. It can't have been easy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again for your time and uh, all the best. Yes, you too. Thank you. See you later. Thank you.